So as you may have noticed, I've been doing a bit of woodworking here on the channel, which has been a great amount of fun. And you know, for once, I've been successfully able to weld without making a huge mess. You know, that's where the real fun is. And for the most part, I've done all of that with basic hand tools, a cheap drop saw, and an old circular saw that's about 30 years old. But if there was something that I was lacking, it was going to be a hand planer. There were quite a few times where I needed a quick way of, say, cleaning up an edge or taking a face down just a couple millimetres, and a hand plane would have come in very quick and easy there. Well, at least quicker than using a router, which I had to use. Unfortunately, though, for whatever reason, the planes that are sold at Bunnings just aren't that well regarded. And I'm not talking about the cheap import brands, I'm talking about good Stanley or Trojan planes, and I'm not paying 70 to 100 bucks to find out what's going wrong. And I guess that brings us here. Instead of buying one and trying to fix it up to make it work, I'm instead going to make one myself. Sounds simple enough, because I know a lot of people do end up making them themselves, except for the fact that I've never used a hand plane before, and it's going to be a real stab in the dark when it comes to a lot of the design choices that I make here. The first choice I need to make is what type of plane to make, which I wasn't exactly sure about in the beginning because, at least to me, all of them do look alike. But diving in and doing a bit more research, I found out there are a few main ones. You know, there's your common bench, block, or smoothing planes, and there are a few others. And ultimately, instead of trying to make a big bench plane the first time round, I instead opted for making a high angle smoothing plane, or something like that. I think something like this would really work with what I want, although once again, this is a bit of a stab in the dark. Now the metal that I'll use for the body is going to be this precision ground O1 tool steel, most because I already had it on hand, and also because it is a nice flat surface which I can start with. For a plane, you do want the bottom to be perfectly flat, and this definitely ticks all the boxes. It's a bit narrower than I would like, but at the end of the day, this is a practice plane. At least I can use the same steel as the blade, or I guess the iron as I believe they call it. So I've gone ahead and squared up the steel that's going to be used for the bottom. That's the precision ground piece. And at the same time, I've also squared up two pieces of normal mild steel, and these are going to form the sides of the plane. Now these are going to sit on either side, and the blade can squeeze down through the middle. And in doing this, we should get a pretty good fit. But obviously, it does need to be held in place. Now, my first thought was I could probably weld it, but that would certainly warp the steel and I would have to go ahead and sand it flat. I could also make a dovetail plane, that is a pretty popular option, but ultimately I decided to pin it all together. So what I did was I accurately drilled holes in all of the pieces and they're going to be held together with pins. And in doing so, this should allow me to disassemble the plane as I'm making it in order to figure out the next step.
Alright, so the pins are doing a great job of holding all the pieces in place. You know, there's no wobble or play in the parts, which is a really good sign. But now I need to get it apart so I can cut the gap for the blade to stick through. I believe in proper terminology, they call this gap the throat. As well as squaring it up, I'd also like the edge to have a 45 degree angle to follow the angle of the blade. Now I haven't used this chamfer tool before, you know, it was just a cheap AliExpress buy and you know what, it did a pretty good job. I'll then get it refitted and you can probably see how the blade is going to follow that angle and rest on it. All it needs now is a block behind it to support it. So I'll get this piece of mild steel in the mill and I'll get it cut down to size. I'll then get a hole drilled and tap, and this is going to be for an adjustment screw for lowering the blade. With the block now made, I'll fix it in place with some CA glue and I'll get the holes marked out for a further set of pins. CA glue is plenty strong enough and as long as I keep the heat down when I'm drilling, it should be just fine. And whilst it's already set up in the mill, I'll get another hole made for the blade's locking pin. With the body now roughly in shape, I can now start to make the blade. Now the first thing I'll do is do the bulk of the stock removal in the milling machine. Doing that should save my grinding stone on the bench grinder and it should be a lot quicker. I'll then switch over to the T-slot cutter and make a crescent cutout for the blade adjustment screw.
With that now done, I now need to harden the blade. It's currently annealed, which allowed me to machine it, but I now need to quench it in oil in order to raise the hardness. And here, I'm only hardening the tip. Only the top bit is going to be in use, and this is going to last me many, many years before we get into any unhardened steel. Alright, well that's the blade now hardened. It's not as sharp as I'd like, but we can worry about that a little bit later. Next, I'll make the adjustment screw for the blade. What I'll do is I'll make an outer ring, which is the correct size, and I'll simply press fit in a cap head screw. Perfect, as you can now see, the ring perfectly fits inside that cutout in the blade, and we can simply turn the screw to advance the blade in and out. And even at this point, with a lot of parts still missing, the plane is still able to make a cut in wood. So at least to me, things are looking really promising. But before I can celebrate, there are still a few things that I need to do. The first thing we need to do is make a way of holding the blade in place because at the moment it can very easily jump out of place as we're trying to push it through the wood. And that is what the extra pin is going to be used for. Now along with the pin, I need to make a plate that's going to lock the blade in place and that's also going to act as our sort of chip breaker. I'll also need a thumb screw for locking everything in place. And the easiest place to get stock for a thumb screw is to simply use an old thumb screw.
And I don't know about you, but that knurling turned out fantastic. Now the way this works is the pin sits in its hole and the clamp will sit on top of the blade and the screw will wedge everything in place. Pretty basic design, but this should work. And all put together, it should look something like this. And once again, things are looking really promising because even in this state, the plane can take a very nice cut. I'll now drill a shallow hole in the base of the plane and this is going to be for a handle. Now the plan is to tap it M8, but because the plate is so thin, a normal M8 tap simply won't cut down to the bottom, and that's due to the lead-in taper. Even with a bottoming tap, they're going to have a small amount of taper, extending one or two threads, and that's still going to be too much for tapping this hole. The solution though was pretty simple. I took a spare tap that I had, and I simply ground down the taper, to allow it to cut threads all the way down to the bottom. As much as I hate destroying my taps, I find these ones really useful to have. I have these in M5, M6, and now M8, and really, you only need to make these once. With the hole now tapped, I make the front knob. I'll also make the rear handle from a piece of Murbau hardwood. Now before I get the handles glued in place, I'll start to get the sides more or less into the shape that I want. Now I'll do the bulk of this with the grinder before switching over to a hand file. I can now screw in two studs and then I'll glue the handle in place.
Final thing left to do is get the ends of the pins peened over and that'll set everything in place. Alright, and that's the plane done. You know, on the whole, it's not too bad for someone who has never really used one of these before. Definitely a bit unconventional in some of the design choices that I did, but the real question is, does it work? And on the whole, I have to say, yes, this thing works fantastically. You know, for creating bevels and curves, this works especially well, and it is certainly its best strength. And not only does it cut really well going with the grain, it is really good at breaking edges, cutting across the grain too. It also works quite well as a normal plane, although it did take some following up with the grinder and the diamond stone to get it cutting the way I'd like. With all that said though, it's not all perfect. Looking back at it, it might have been a little bit wiser to go with a low angle blade rather than the 45 degree up that you see here. If you want to go by the book, at least in theory, a lower angle plane should be easier to push through the work but at the same time, there is more risk of tear out in the wood. So I guess there are some trade-offs that I might need to think about when I make a bigger plane. Also, the front knob was a bit of a miss. It's a bit too large and it ended up catching all the chips and clogging everything up. I also need to further refine the chip breaker to better curl up the chips and I guess break the chips. But apart from that, in all other areas, I'm really happy with this first attempt. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next week.